Welcome back, Golly Vibes family. I pray everybody is well. Look who we have on the desk today. In a candid discussion with his staff, Pastor Philip Mitchell, head pastor of Church 2819, addresses the mistreatment of the gospel. The influence of the Americanized church focused on prosperity and his own journey of humility and examining his preaching. He emphasizes that if the gospel must be conformed to fit the culture, it ceases to be the gospel. Now, we're going to watch a video on um, this brother right here in just a minute. Um, you know, I've seen different videos of uh, Pastor Philip Mitchell. Is that his name? Let me see. Uh, uh, Pastor Philip Mitchell. Yeah. I've seen different videos on his, on his brother, you know, and the videos I've seen, you know, really show his heart for the Lord. There's different individuals that I see where I, I, I see that they really have a heart for God. You know, uh, they really want to know the true, the, the true Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, and this is one of them that I've seen. Um, I don't know his personal life. You know, but the clips that I've seen uh, show that. Amen. Um, let's check out this video. I, I haven't even seen this video yet, but let's check it out together. Look at us. Look at the stuff we complain about. Listen to our prayers. Look at the things we prioritize. Look at what we have made the gospel. Look at the songs that we sing. Look at the things we're always begging God for. I mean, just really just look at us. I, I just got to wonder after listening later how pathetic we must look to the Lord sometimes with some of our prayers and some of our antics and some of our shenanigans and our foolishness and all of the self-help we keep preaching across these platforms. Self-help and we turn every sermon about our benefit, our gain, us, 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 us. And you can't preach that in Uganda. Look at all the stuff we preach in this country that masquerades as the gospel. Right. That you cannot preach in Uganda. And if we can't preach it in Uganda, Ryan, then is it really the gospel? You see? And what we do is we take we take the gospel of Christ and the teaching of the apostles, we Americanize it to make it prosperity driven. This is why I gotta be careful my own teaching. Cause some of the stuff you share over here, you cannot share that in Rwanda or Uganda. So if my gospel is trapped to my nation, is it really the gospel? Wow. Yeah. Mm. Interesting how he said masquerades. Cause we know the Bible says even, even Satan masquerades around like an angel of light. Now, you do have a lot of different churches that are operating out of a different spirit. They're operating out of the Antichrist spirit because they're teaching false doctrine. If you're not teaching Jesus, then you're teaching another Jesus. Galatians 1.8 1, Galatians 1, says, even if an angel comes to you and teaches you a different gospel than the one we have, let that angel be cursed. Paul's talking about uh, stepping out of the traditions because he also says keep the traditions in another verse. You know what I mean? And, you know, a lot of people think to themselves, uh, well, she's talking about a physical angel from heaven, you know, with the wings flying down and telling me something else. No, not necessarily. It doesn't have to be like Joseph Smith or Muhammad. It could also be talking about uh, a messenger. Because in the Bible, where, um, in the Bible, the word messenger and the Greek word is anglios. It means angel. You know what I mean? So when the Lord was saying John is his messenger, he was saying John is his angel. You know, so a pastor or, or a preacher could be teaching you a different doctrine, and they could be an angel teaching you a different doctrine. Somebody who's supposed to be a leader in the Lord's house, somebody who's supposed to be somebody who's looked up to, to feed you God's word, could be teaching you a different doctrine. And that's happening in a lot of churches. I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, people don't understand, but that's happening in a lot of churches. I get a lot of, I get a, listen, I get a lot of different messages about the whole once saved, always saved thing. Once saved, always saved thing. And it scares me. It scares me. One of the main things I always ask him, I'll say, well, the word of God says those who endure to the end shall be saved. Have you endured to the end yet? Or do you know anybody who has endured to the end yet? Listen to me. If anybody on this video can comment in the comments right now, somebody that they know who has endured to the end, let me know. Put it in the comments. That's still alive. 
if no if you haven't endured to the end yet then you must be what working out your salvation with fear and trembling too many people want to feel comfortable that's not how they preached back in the days that's not what they were teaching at the school of alexandria that's not what they were teaching the very first christians that's not what the early church fathers were teaching it's as simple as this, my brothers and sisters, because Jesus said there would be a great falling away. That word falling away is the, uh, the word apostasia. It means defection from truth. What truth was he talking about? He was talking about falling away from the traditions that Paul was talking about. So it's as simple as this, brothers and sisters. It's as simple as this. When people want to argue with you or quarrel with you or debate with you, it's as simple as this. Where... Did the doctrine you are telling me originate from? Because every doctrine originated from somewhere. Every interpretation originated from somewhere. And my point is this. If it did not originate from the very first Christians, the very first apostles, disciples. Because we have their writings as well. And their writings coincide with their fathers, with the apostles of Jesus. If it does not originate or line up with their teachings it's false doctrine it's that simple it's that it it's as simple as that if what you're telling me does not line up with what the first christians were being taught is false doctrine you have failed from the traditions that paul was talking about when he said keep the traditions the problem is so many people be so in love and married to religion instead of jesus they be married to their doctrine instead of Jesus that they don't want to give it up. They're indoctrinated with a lie so much that they can't even hear the truth. They've been bitten by a serpent and now they're numb to truth. Honest, this is exactly why I say it's easier to teach an atheist. I'm going to say it again. It's easier to teach an atheist than it is to teach a Christian who's already been indoctrinated with a lie. Because they have to renounce what they've said. I, I, listen, I was talking to a sister the other day. You know, she has a lot. Of, she she has a lot of she has a lot of doctrine in her. She's been indoctrinated listening to a certain individual, right? So she's in the process of renouncing what she knew to understand what she should know, and that's a hard process. That is hard. That is difficult. That is difficult. But, you know, the Lord says, he'll say, depart from me. I never knew you to Christians. He said, they'll say, Lord, Lord, I prophesied in your name. No, Lord, Lord, but I cast out demons. Who does that? Christians. Why will he say that? Well, that word new is the Greek word gnosko. It's a Jewish idiom for sexual intercourse. So spiritually, he's saying, I never impregnated you with my word. What is his word? Luke 8, 11 says the seed is the word. That word seed is the Greek word sporos, which also means sperma. It's talking about God's DNA. So if the Lord is saying, I never impregnated you with my word, that means you have a false word. You've been learning from a false teacher. Somebody has been teaching you a different Jesus that is not Jesus. So the Jesus that you've been getting taught is a false Jesus that you think is a real Jesus. So when you actually meet the real Jesus, he's going to tell you, I don't know you. Is that registering? This is why it's important to go back to the traditions that Paul was talking about. This is why it's important when I ask somebody, where did that doctrine originate from? Is it what the very first Christians were being taught? If not, it's false teaching. This is why I don't get mad at individuals. I feel sad for them when they come at me and say different things like this and come at me with a different doctrine that I'm, I'm aware of is completely false and heretic. It's heretical. It's heresy. But I don't get upset with people anymore. Listen, once you are in truth and you are in the true Christ, you are completely in true doctrine and pure word, pure interpretation. When people try to argue with you or say different things to you, you don't get upset with them. 
You want to help that soul. You want to help that soul. If you get upset with somebody for something, you have a different spirit in you. If they can rise anger in you, where's your patience? Where's your long suffering? Are you enduring? No. Is that really Christ in you? That's getting mad? Oh yeah, this is righteous anger. I can't stand him. Really? Last time I checked, Yeshua was nailed to a cross and said, Lord, forgive them, for they not they not they not know what they do. Are you, are you being nailed to a cross? Somebody taking your life right now? If you truly have Christ in you, when somebody persecutes the Christ in you, you should be saying, Father, forgive them, for they not know, they not know what they do. Now that's Christ. Amen. I love you guys. Let me know what you guys think of the video. Put your notifications on, you guys. Turn your notifications on because YouTube shadow bans me. Amen. So turn your notifications on, my brothers and sisters. I love you guys. God bless. Shalom.